right. Everybody is here. Well, AJ, if, uh, if last year was like your white belt year, was that like your, your blue belt test or something? I mean, you got you got pressed a little bit tonight. I'm not a blue belt till they promote me. Right now, I'm like white belt, three stripes. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about your performance overall? I mean, uh, you know, kind of got pushed to the limit and maybe maybe got a chance to show some character there tonight. Yeah, I, you know, I got to give props to, to my opponent. He's a tough son of a gun, and he's really crafty, much more deceiving than I anticipated. But he's a black, he's a dual black belt. Like I said, he's got a karate black belt and a jiu-jitsu black belt. Um, so he, you know, props to him. He 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 brought me to the third round. I didn't expect that. Were there moments in there where you got kind of mentally tested, where you had to dig deep and and you know try to turn things in your time? I'd like to say I thought about it, but I didn't. Just kind of instincts kicked in there. And I got to ask about the finish. I think. I mean, it looked like there were multiple submission opportunities there. What, what exactly was it? I think they called it a triangle, but what, what was the finish there? I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> That's called the Agas arm. That's the Agas arm? That's my patented move. I learned that from, from my jiu-jitsu professor a long time ago and just kind of made it my own. You've seen that finish in Polaris like three or four times. I actually, uh, funny enough, just shared it on my Facebook three days ago. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. So it was cool to get that, finally get that. He, it's, a, it's a bait move. So he, you go for the arm bar and... Uh, you trick him into falling into the triangle, and he fell right for it. It's not really your traditional triangle; it's a it's a little bit of a uh, variation. So, but ultimately, I was stoked on that choked, one. Uh, like pressure on the arm, or yeah, no, he's he's choked. He's choked out. Yeah. Oh, what did he find? Really? What about the thought uh, that uh, he possibly didn't tap? There's talk going around that he's maybe feeling like he didn't tap. Was there any controversy? Did you hear anything? From about that. Did he say that? There's some talk. We're not sure. Some yet. people on Twitter are saying that he protested, but we can't find anywhere where he protested. I mean, I could have kept it longer. I... Right. It, looked pretty clear. <laughs> it seemed pretty clear to you, though. You didn't feel it. There was any... it what did you think? It looked like he. Yeah. yeah. We're not saying you, we're not, we're just, we weren't in there, so we're, we're we just were just confirming. Wondering if yeah. yeah. Didn't send anything to you about. It, it was about as tight as tight can get okay. without his head popping off. Right. Have you used that before in a uh, jiu-jitsu tournament? Yeah, uh, the last one that I can think of, it was either Brazilian Nationals or Polaris. Polaris, I, I um, caught Minoa men with it, you know, the MMA veteran. I think it was Polaris 5. It's my move. Well, Call it the Agas arm. Because gotcha. you get your arm and you're like, oh, wait, I'm getting triangle choke, no longer an arm bar. <laughs> Let me ask you, AJ, the, the boxing and the striking, everyone's saying, I think a uh, commentator was even saying, all he's got to do is just do what Richard Perez was showing him. But for, for a world-class grappler to all of a sudden become a world-class striker, it's not that easy. How did you feel out there, uh, the exchanges you were having back and forth? Were you getting frustrated? It looks like you were getting picked apart a little bit, but it looks like you were staying composed. What was your thought about what was going on in that yeah, first couple rounds? Yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have that, that those three rounds because it's, it's an opportunity to get some tape and, and go and, and reassess some some mistakes that were made and, and, and do better the next time. I think that, you know, he, he's, a, he's an impressive fighter. He, uh, I, 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 tur I turned it up on him, though, in the third round. It took me a couple couple minutes to get warmed up and um, now it's just back to the drawing board with with Richard Ernie and Randy and, and the guys at Nick Diaz Academy um, and it's 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 always good to have this kind of experience because you can you can draw on it you know training is one thing but when you you're going against the guy and like like I said he, he's a tough guy but this is the fight business so you got to keep it serious all the way up until after the fight and you're just like hey man thank you for the fight because it's serious business for me I I can't fake that and I, he can try, but he can't. It's as yeah. real as it gets. Your, um, your last uh, post-fight um, interview, you mentioned about you need to be meaner. Yeah. Did, were you meaner tonight? Is this the, I mean, did it look more mean? It did. I mean, yeah. did, did you feel like, I mean, but your, your last, your fight last time looked pretty mean too. I'm just saying like. Yeah. But it, did you feel like this was the, I don't know, the, the mean side that had to come out? You know, uh, <laughs> I think I told Amy this before. I'm a perfectionist, and it's just it's never complete. So that's a that's going to be something that will just continue to progress as as fights go on. And I'm just looking forward to the next one. So I'm going to go back to to the academy, and you know, Nate and the guys are already giving me criticism. To go forward. So it's uh, there's a lot that I got to go back and write down some stuff before I forget it. And 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 
build on for the next one because you know th this is a great this is a great venue the forum it's something special it really is it's it's the first we had the the mock weigh-ins and bellator's changing the game so i'm i'm lucky to be a part of it i'm lucky to have all the guys here um and it's uh it's looking good just gotta work on my striking do you have anyone in mind um, I gotta think about it. You know, is there anybody you have in mind? Well, Chris Lencioni says when AJ Agazar wants to fight a real fighter, give me a call. <laughs> did he win his last one? He did. It's How? Uh, it was the first round triangle. So you're gonna put up his triangle versus my triangle? Maybe. The Agazar versus the Lencioni triangle? I guess. I don't know. I, I, I like the I like the striker, the karate guy, because it challenges me. You know, it's uh, I, I can go in there and grapple a grappler all day, but it's like. <laughs> I can just stick to jujitsu if I want to do that. This was a true test. <laughs> I got kicked in the head again. <laughs> so I got to get through that and, and work my way around it and get some more head movement. And um, if I told you how many times Richard's yell at me since my last fight and this fight, you'd, <laughs> you wouldn't believe me. So it's uh, a lot of work to be done. This is by, you know, certainly not the last, um, it's not the finished product. This is just practice. You call it practice. Kind of a mixed night for, for your camp. Did Avila's loss? That was anything? crazy. I can't believe they gave that to him. He's running away the whole fight. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was nuts, man. But, you know, Chris is a warrior. He's uh, it's not the last you'll see of him either. So I know he's going to be coming back even hungrier. Your, um, your, your team looked pretty upset after that decision was read and when they uh, walked yeah. past press row. Did that, that energy affect the, the locker room at all ahead of yours? Just try to stay focused. You know, we have just a, an elite uh, coaching staff that really conditions us and puts us in the right mindset. And, and you know, you, we saw that in my fight. You know, had a little tough beginning and worked through it and, and found the submission. And that's what it's all about is overcoming adversity and doing what you do. So I was pleased with uh, that aspect of the fight. Absolutely. AJ, you competed at heavier weights in submission. Can you tell us what weights you were competing at? Not only that, but you were competing with <clears throat> guys that weighed a lot more than you. So uh, 45, I think, is not where you were ever in a submission. Uh, yeah, you know, and the, <clears throat> the thing with that is that there, there's there's no impact in, in jiu-jitsu. There's no striking in competitive jiu-jitsu. So it changes it a little bit. Um, but if, you know, Rich Jow called me up and he's like, hey, dude, I want you to face Ryan Bader, I, I wouldn't blink an eye. I would do it. Just because I'm used to it, but the the commission probably won't sanction that fight. You're I would like it though. <laughs> you're definitely bigger and stronger than most featherweights. I would, I would think. Yeah, yeah, just not not that tall. Right, right. <laughs> God doesn't give wings to snakes. That's it. Last thing, last thing. You went to the Nick Diaz Academy. Jake Shields was never a really great buddy of yours. Was there any sort of a weird transition making that happen? Do you see him there? Did you speak with him before joining? Because it seems like that that might not have been the place people thought you might have ended up with Jake not being one of your favorite people. Jake's a great guy, OG, fighter, wrestler, jiu-jitsu guy, and um, you know he 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 comes strong with the Nick Diaz Army. So there's no question there. You just gotta stop hanging out with some of those other weird grapplers. <laughs> gotcha. Was Nick uh, in your locker room? I know he was in your corner. Was he? Was he with you in your locker room? Nick's right? always in my corner. Oh, Whether he's president or not, he's always here. He's always sending me texts and reminders and little hints here and there. And uh, that's that's the spirit of Nick Diaz. It's kind of looming when you, you don't see him, and it <laughs> gives you those friendly reminders right when you need him. He's the OG of the OGs. So, thank you guys. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Thank you, Appreciate it. Appreciate it.